I wanted to thank everybody for coming tonight. We're here as a celebration of Bugs Henderson's life. I spoke to his wife, Patty, just a few minutes ago, and she sends her love to everybody and thanks for being here. And I want you all to know that every penny that you put in will be used toward the betterment of the family. We have a jar up there on top of the piano, and that's how these things are funded. All we ask you to do is put what you can in there. This is a, an opportunity to uh, share with Bugs and his family what he shared with us over the years. I met Bugs in 1965 at an infamous place called The Cellar. Anybody remember The Cellar? How many have heard of The Cellar? (laughs) Well, yeah, how many have played at The Cellar? (laughs) Bugs and I rekindled our friendship a few years ago when we opened this venue up. The only thing he asked me to do at that point in time was not to be out of touch so long and have something this cool and not call him quicker. But by the way, would you all uh, give a hand to uh, Buddy and Rose, Bugs' son and daughters down here, and Amber. They came uh, to be here with you guys tonight and to celebrate this event as well. How many of you, is this your first time here? Raise your hand for me. Oh, wow. That's very cool. Okay, this is a listening room. So what we ask you to do, if you have dialogue going on during the shows, during the performances, we ask it to be between the stage and you, instigated by the artist. And if y'all want to talk or visit, we'd like for you to go outside or go in the other room and do it because the room is geared for one thing, and that's sharing music with you. And all you do if you're talking is you distract somebody else from why they're here. So this is one of the reasons that Bugs came here. One of the other reasons this room is uh, dedicated to the singer-songwriter community. When you think of Bugs Henderson, most people think of the blazing blues guitar player. But what a lot of us have learned is that he's a hell of a songwriter. That's one of the reasons that he came here. And I'm doing everything I can to not get emotional. So I'm going to tell you the story of this picture real quick. Bugs' first time in here was uh, a few weeks after we opened. We opened in June of 2010, and he came in August. And the funny thing is when I asked him to come, I said, you know, Bugs, let's uh, let's go a few months down line and I'll have time to publicize it. And he said, well, I got a date open in two weeks. Let's do it then. And I said, well, you know, I mean, we're just opening this thing up. I don't know if I can get that many people here. He said, I can fill a room up in two weeks. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and he did. He put 65 in here. Whereas there's 45 of you in here tonight. So just to let you know, Bugs, you'll notice him in a pair of Speedo shorts and a Gentleman's Club t-shirt on here. Now, what Bugs did was, after he did the show and and everything, he came back the next time in December of that year and did our Christmas show, our first Christmas show that we had in here. And he left this as a Christmas present for Helen and I, but he hid it at the end of the couch over there. I found it in February. (laughs) Honest, I was in here cleaning and found this, and I called him and I said, thank you, you know, and he said, well, I thought you were pissed off at me. And I said, no, I mean, why, why would I be pissed off at you? And he said, well, you know, I mean, I didn't hear from you. And I said, well, I said, why did you put it at the end of the couch? Why would you hide it? And he said, well, I just thought it'd be a little bit more entertaining. You know, it... <laughs> <clears throat> Your dad was something special. <laughs> well, Bugs came and he wore this outfit at the taping of the radio show that we did that afternoon. But when he came back that evening, he wore the same outfit back. And the first thing he said to the audience was, I have other clothes. I was thinking about dressing up a little bit, then I saw Randy, and I uh, figured, hell, I was already overdressed, so I just, uh, (laughs) that's the way it started that night, so this first set of music tonight, there's going to be about eight or nine of us are going to come up, and we're going to do a song for you guys and for the family, and there's songs that uh, we're doing for a reason. I don't know what some of the people are doing. I do know what some of the people are doing. But the first one that's going to come up here is a friend of ours uh, named Steve Brooks. And Steve um, was going to be here. He'd never seen Bugs play. And and, uh, he was going to be here to do a radio show tomorrow. Steve is an Austin, longtime Austin singer-songwriter and been around the the market down there for a lot of years. Since he was going to be here anyway, he wanted to do a song in in this first set. So I wish y'all would uh, welcome our, our friend Steve Brooks. What a crowd here. So uh, so it was 65, uh, the first time Bucks played here, huh? Yep. Everybody got very close. Sounds like rock and roll to me. There we go. This is my sound check song. This is my sound check song. 
ain't that catchy, but it ain't that long. This is my sound check song. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I, I picked this song because uh, it felt to me like it had uh, expressed a lot of the spirit of uh, Bugs and his music. I wrote it last year with a friend of mine from Austin named Jim Patton. The song's called Still Got a Little Wild in Me. It goes out to everyone who feels that uh, they are not quite through with their misspent youth. Zeppelin, drive the wrong way up a one-way street with two six-packs of Milwaukee's Beast. Now I drive my kids to all their soccer games. Everybody says how much I've changed, but I still got a little wild in Still got a little wild in me Most of the time it's hard to see But I still got a little wild in me Still got a little wild in me I still get stoned when I'm drinking beer but I keep it down so the kids won't hear Still hit 6th Street now and then But I'm home before the talk shows end My minivan, I cruise the motor mile I pump my fist and sing Born to be wild Cause I still got a little wild in Still got a little wild in me Most of the time it's hard to see But I still got a little wild in me Still got a little wild in me Now I might look like a lamb But that ain't who I am There's a tiger in me And I, he wrecks free Cause I still got a little wild in me Still got a little wild in me Once in a while, you still can't see I still got a little wild in me Still got a little wild in me Still got a little wild in me Still got a little Born to be One more time for Steve Brooks. Y'all welcome Mr. Jim Nitschke. Many songs have been written about this man. I did a cowboy show in here not too long ago. That's what I do is I write cowboy music. Don't look much like a cowboy, but think like one. I think Randy ought to write a song called, I like the blues, but it bugs me. <laughs> huh? What do you think, Randy? I already wrote it. <laughs> I wrote this was the last song I did uh, for my cowboy show, so I wrote it for 
the last verse for Bugs. Ha, let's try it. <laughs> I like my memory to be a happy one. I like to leave an afterglow when the last bell tolls. Well, I'm just a cowboy, and I'm a wishing that my friends will help me when our master calls. I like to leave an echo whispering through the twilight haze of happy times and laughing times and bright sunny days. Well, I'm just a cowboy, and I'm a wishing that my friends will help me finish this run. I've never died before, I don't know how So I'll drive my life till the wheels fall off Getting a motorcycle next week I'll not take care of that one, huh? I like to hear the tears of grieving To drive before the sun Have happy memories when my life is done I'm just a cowboy and I'm a-wishing That my friends will help me finish this run I've never died before, I don't know how So I'll drive my life till the wheels fall off I know his memory is a happy one He left an afterglow, now his last bell toll Well, he's a blues man, what a blues man And his friends are helping, now his master's call and he left here with a blues man's afterglow. Thank you. Y'all welcome our friend, Mudcat Reams, Michael Reams. As I said, yeah, when no you more. get to be my age, the more you cover up, the better off you are. <laughs> get the lights low. I guarantee low. you. Boy, I tell you what, if I could wear, you know, like a trench coat, a hat pulled down over the eyes, and I could still get it done, I'd do that. I guarantee you. would be tracking you if you did that. That's probably. <laughs> well, I never actually met Bugs. It seemed like we were always someplace, and he was playing someplace, and I was playing someplace else, and... Uh, but we both knew about each other, and it was it was very gratifying to know that uh, even though I had never played with him or anything, I knew by him by reputation, but I was amazed that he knew anything about me. At any rate, uh, this is a song that I wrote a number of years ago. Primarily, I wrote it uh, for my wife, but I think you could probably use it for anybody that you really care about. This one's called Walk With An Angel. If you ever walked with an angel Have you ever seen the sky That's how I feel when I'm with you baby But I don't know why Maybe it's the way you hold me Maybe it's something in your smile My feelings are to fly If you ever walk with an angel Then maybe you will see Just how lovely and beautiful This whole world can be Maybe it's the 
And say you'll always be mine Maybe it's the way you laugh with me Just to keep us both from crying If you ever walk with an angel Then surely you will see Just how lovely and beautiful you feel my heart beat this whole world can be I'm so proud to love you this whole world can be You got me smiling all the time, baby yeah. This whole world can be This whole world can be Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I'd like to bring up uh, Helen now. I want to thank all of you for being here tonight. Really appreciate it, and I know the family appreciates it. This was the night that Bugs was supposed to do his uh, fourth studio concert. We wish he could have been here, but I kind of have a feeling he is. I think he's here with us right now, every single one of us. I'm going to do a song that I wrote. It's called Thank You, Lord, for Showing Me the Way. It's just a real positive song, and I th and this is what tonight's about, is being positive and not mourning the loss, but celebrating his life and what he gave to everybody.
never knew how good this life could be He opened up my eyes, now I can see He gave your one and only son Salvation is there for everyone I want to thank you, Lord, for showing me For showing me the way. Thank you. Now, Mr. Randy, you've got something for bugs. Yeah, and I need to get Ian to come up here. Since yeah. He's be after this song that Randy's going to do is called Ride with the Devil. It's a song that he wrote from one of his mother's sayings when she didn't like who he was hanging out with. She'd say, Randy Lee, if you ride with the devil, he's going to want to drive. Hence, that's where the song came from. Well, Randy did that song for Bugs the first time Bugs came. And uh, after the event, after the the show, Bugs emailed Randy and said, hey, had a great time. Um, Would love to come back and do it again. Oh, by the way, I love that devil song. So (laughs) that's why he selected this song tonight. He, he gets he gets back home and he writes me an email and he says, "Yeah, I, I don't know when I've made less money or had more fun." You know, it was the nice devil song that that uh, the line that I always hung in my mind and I pulled up that email and read it the other day. And anyway, uh, this is ride with the devil. the devil he's gonna want to drive he'd rather have you dead than alive ah he's very good very good at telling lies sweet lies if you ride with the devil you're gonna want to drive well my mama she always told me be wise in all i do there's a presence out there trying to get to you. Oh, the devil, he is so fly and all he sees. If you never feel him near you, it's just about time to leave. And if you ride with the devil, he's gonna wanna drive. He'd rather have you dead than alive. Very good, very good at telling lies, sweet lies. If you ride with the devil, he's gonna want to drive. If you ride with the devil 
He's gonna wanna drive and If you ride with the devil And don't you know he's gonna want And don't you know he's gonna want And don't you know he's gonna wanna drive Don't you let him take the wheel <laughs> Y'all welcome Mr. Ian Dixon yeah. Ian is open for bugs twice so. <laughs> Grab a capo here I, I did get a chance to play with Bugs last year for, for the first time, and I was really nervous about it. But as soon as you meet him, <laughs> don't worry about it. Just play. Have fun. And, and after that, it was just wonderful. I was uh, stealing all of Ray Wally Hubbard's lines. And about halfway through the show, he comes in and says, hey, those are Ray's lines. And I felt really bad, and he says, yeah, I've stolen them all, too. <laughs> Yeah, it's he really made me feel good. And I found that uh, kind of our friends get compartmentalized. You know, you got friends to hang out with work and friends you hang out with uh, for music and your neighbors. And I've kind of found the music friends are, I won't say some of the best, but sometimes the ones you can relate to some sometimes better than others. And sometimes we lose them. And, and I know they'd want to hang around and hear the music a little bit. So I wrote this song for them. Another tune for Texas. Music doesn't move me like before. The beat's a little slower. Toes don't feel like tapping anymore Sure we'll miss the weekends With someone that I'm never gonna see I know he'd miss the music I know exactly what he'd say to me Don't you cry for me Dear, be sad Think of all the good times we have had Hold a chair out for the ladies See them safely home again Save a table right up front And share it with a friend Don't you let the music again Don't cry for me Just another Friday night Another night of music at the hall There's an empty seat up front There's no hat, no smile, no cheerful call He always got there first Even though he had the longest way to go something that he'd want us all to know Well don't you cry for me Don't you dare be sad Think of all the good times we have had Hold a chair out for the ladies See them safely home again Save a table right up front And share it with friends don't you let the music in, don't cry for me Did you ever wonder Why things never turn out like you planned Just don't forget that Tell your friends you love them while you can Don't have an expectation That tomorrow's gonna end like yesterday And 
make time for the music before it fades away. Don't you cry for me, don't you dare be sad. Think of all the good times we have had. Hold a chair out for the ladies, see them safely home again. Save a table right up front and share it with a friend. Don't you let the music end, don't cry for me. Don't you let the music end, don't cry for me. Don't you let the music end, don't cry for me. Thank you very much. One more time, Ian Dixon. Yeah. Welcome, Miss Ann Armstrong and Steve Hughes. So, you guys, it's really great that everyone is here. I'm glad I'm here. Aren't you glad you're here, Steve? I did s several shows with Bugs at Poor David's. Quite an experience for me. <laughs> as a, as a, it was before we started touring nationally. And he was such an incredible showman. And a minch. You guys know what that word means? But Bugs was a minch, which is a Jewish term, it's a Yiddish term, it means just an incredibly wonderful human being. So he commented on this tune that I did, so I'm gonna do it tonight. Although it's not really nighttime yet.
Thank, Thank you. you so much. And Steve Ann Armstrong. Woo! We got a lot, so many nice people here tonight, but my wonderful niece is here tonight, and I haven't seen her in 20 years. Reno was four years old the last time we saw Jaxie. Raise your hand. It's the first time I've got to be with her. Okay, y'all got, we got something special for you. In talking to Bugs, he always told me one of his favorite songs was Amazing Grace. My dad is going to come up and do this for you. How many of you know Harold, first of all? Okay. Those of you that don't, are you ready? Most of us are familiar with this, America's most famous hymn, or one of the most. And if you'll just join me on the first verse. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. John 3.16, one of the most quoted verses in the Bible, and one that Christians place their faith in, is, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then one less quoted follows that, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. We place our faith in that, and I'd like to just close with a little prayer. Dear Father, we come to you in the precious name of Jesus, just praising you, worshiping you, loving you, adoring you, thanking you for life, thanking you for fellow musicians, songwriters, friends in this room, families, and, and just pray your special blessings on each of them. I pray that you would bless them physically, spiritually, financially, and pray that we would go out with a spirit of love for our fellow man. God bless you all and love you and good night. Amen. Uh, hello, everyone. I guess the first thing I need to say is thank you, of course. You know, it's hard for me to stand up here without getting emotional, so if I do, please forgive me. But uh, I just want everybody here to know that my father, the musician that he was, the incredible musician that he was, he was even more of an incredible man. 
I'm 34 years old now, and and in all of my years, I cannot think of one time in my life that he ever affected a person negatively. Everywhere he went, and everybody that he was with, and anybody that ever knew him or met him or came across, he affected them in an extremely positive way. And that's the way he was all the time. He's the greatest man I've ever met, and in my 34 years of living, And being raised around him, I have met some incredible human beings. I've met some not-so-incredible ones as well. (laughs) Of course, somebody's son is going to say that, but take the son, take the family out of the equation, and he is the most incredible man that I've ever known. I thank you all, and, you know, I I hope that I can somehow... uh, just if I could just have a I mean I mean just right here just shows the man's legacy right here shows how incredible of a man he was you know you know and and you know all these you know all the stories that he's telling I mean uh, when he's done telling them, everybody laughs because his sense of humor was incredible you know he had the, just just everything about the man was incredible and as sad as it is that he's gone, you know, one of my best friends told me something that helped me with this, and it was that the man lived an incredible life. The man lived his life. Of course, we all wish, especially us, that, that he would be around for a hundred more years, but the man lived an incredible life, and here we are right here. It shows it. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you for allowing us to come here and see this because it's such an incredible thing to see the legacy that he has left. And I thank you all so much, and God bless. Don't go anywhere yet. Let's go something, and then I want, I want to hear your story of your dad. Uh, for <laughs> I, I'm not very good at this type of stuff. <laughs> um, basically, everything that Buddy just said, you know, uh, my dad would have wanted it just like this, you know. Uh, uh, the way that it's intimate and feeling good and uh, people singing their own songs, I mean, this is exactly how he would have wanted it. And just like Buddy said, you know, imagine how good he was at the guitar. You know, he was 10 times better at being a dad. And, and being a family man and being a person and uh, I don't know how how many of you actually really knew him or met him or got to play with him but uh, anyone that did you know it's a blessing I'm sure you all know that and uh, what a pastor told me the other night that was there for my dad's memorial is just to remember that he is not someone that was in our past he's someone that's in our future and I just really thank everybody for being here and uh, we're not supposed to be sad right now but that song that Ian did, you know, whew. <laughs> we shouldn't be singing songs like that right now, should we? <laughs> uh, Rose did this for me. Tell us your favorite funny story of your dad's. Because there's, like you said, there's a lot of people that weren't in Ben Wheeler when we heard a lot more of the stories. But Man, there's so, so many. I would have to really think on it. Um, story about the hotel room in Nacogdoches. Buddy could tell that too, yeah. He did, uh, him and this was, hell, this was before I was born. You know, this was, this was in his long hair days, but uh, he did, he, they, they got a little inebriated and uh, glued everything down in the hotel room, including the, the handset to the phone and the, there's actually pictures of this room. And uh, the door, you know, glued everything shut and uh, is not allowed back in that town ever. As, <laughs> As a matter of fact, they tried to play there about five or six years ago and uh, just thought it would be worth a phone call to make sure it was okay, and they called back and said, hell no. And it, I mean, it had been like 20 years, 20 or 30 years since it, this had happened, but, um, you know, I, I, my dad, hell, we, there's a trophy at my house for the sexiest legs from my dad, you know. My dad wore the shorty shorts, and everybody knows it, and the, either no shoes or the vans, and that's why we've all got the vans on today, and... Uh, I'm sure Buddy's got some other stories for you, but um, I'm sure everybody's got stories of their own, too. You know, my dad left an impression on anyone that ever (laughs) walked into a room with him or heard his music. So, anyways, I just really want to thank you guys. Thank you. 
right, it's, I know y'all are going to be all bummed out when I tell you this, but I don't have any stories. I mean, it's the God honest truth. The reason is, is because it was, for me, it was one continuing story. I mean, I'm serious. So when y'all tell y'all stories, it's so great for me because when I have people come up to me all the time and ask me to tell them a story, but it, it, it there, there really isn't one because it never ended. It never ended. So uh, I will say this, though, that, uh, you know, when something like this happens to happens in, in, in your lives or like it happened in our life, it makes you really appreciate life. So what I want y'all to do for me is soak this up, what y'all are experiencing right here, right now. Soak this up because nothing lasts forever. Well, except for the Lord, of course. But um, <laughs> So soak it up when you're with your family, when you're with your daughter or your mother, or your grand, whoever, soak it up because you never know when, when you never know when it's over. And so this right here is such an incredible thing to be able to be a part of. So I thank you all once again and God bless again, I guess. Thank you.